Assalamu alaikum dears. In this video, we will be discussing some aspects of sentential meaning in the field of semantics. Our main focus will be on what is paraphrase, what is ambiguity, what is vagueness, what is tautology, what is presupposition, what is entailment, and what is anomaly and contradiction. Let's start. Paraphrase. Paraphrase is to the sentence what synonymy is to a word. This means that the paraphrase explains a situation in which two or more sentences have one meaning. A sentence can have many paraphrases. There are two types of paraphrases, lexical and structural paraphrase. In lexical paraphrase, we have two or more sentences finding the same interpretation is a result of the replacement of one word or phrase by another. Look at the example. The chairman hired a bachelor. Now look at the lexical paraphrase changing lexical items. The chairman hired an unmarried man. Now in place of a bachelor, we have used an unmarried man. Both a bachelor and an unmarried man, unmarried man are phrases. Consider the following example. The man was agitated, the man was anxious. We have achieved the fair phrase by substitution of a word agitated with another word anxious. Structural paraphrase is achieved when uh, we alter the arrangement of the sentences through transformations. The following are the examples. Look at, they bought a new apartment. Basic is VO, subject, verb, object. Now look at this alteration. It was a new apartment that they bought. Now it is structural paraphrase, the same meaning. What they bought was a new apartment. A new apartment was what they bought. This is what paraphrase is. Now what is ambiguity? When an expression can give more than one interpretation, ambiguity arises. Therefore, polysemy relates to words and ambiguity is concerned with sentences. We have two types of ambiguity, lexical and structural. Lexical ambiguity occurs when the presence of just a specific word leads to multiple interpretation. Consider the example. The team has many goals. She prepared tables. Now, it should be noted that goals and tables can be interpreted in different easy based contexts. The team has many goals. Goal has many meanings, so it can be differently interpreted. Structural ambiguity is achieved by the organization of the elements of the sentence. It is possible to interpret these elements in different ways. Consider these examples. They promoted all English teachers. One. Second. Boiling water can be dangerous. The ambiguity in the second sentence derives from possibility of reading the sentence is water that is boiling I mean hot water, can be dangerous. Second, the act of boiling water can be dangerous. Now you can interpret it in either sense. The first interpretation makes boiling water is a subject noun phrase, wherein the second interpretation boiling water is a complement. Now what is vagueness? A sentence is vague when it has no clear definite meaning. This lack of meaning may derive from incompatibility of semantic properties of some of the words. Sometimes a vague expression may be grammatically well formed, yet it, its meaning may be far-fetched. Consider the famous example of Chomsky, colorless, green ideas sleep furiously together. It is structurally very much acceptable, but semantically it has no meaning. It should be noted that many of what we describe as literary language would have been vague except that we understand the background is literary. Consider further the following example. The stones consoled her. This expression is clearly a personification since stones, which are non-living, have been reduced with the characteristics of counseling living things. So in literature, sometimes a vague sentence produce meaning because of the literary background or the context that a writer is providing to the sentence. Now, what is tautology? A situation of tautology arises when we have unnecessary repetition of elements in communication. 
there is undue um, emphasis without necessarily making meaning any clear. Tautology is closely associated with redundancy, which is the introduction of linguistic units which do not affect the state or meaning of the larger constructions. The following are the examples of tautology. This bachelor has not been married. If it is bachelor, then not been married. It is unnecessary to use these two things with each other. The congregations are members of church. If it is congregation, they are obviously members of church. Other instances of tautology are unlawful theft. Theft is already unlawful. Can be able. If it is able, then can be should not be used. Now let's talk about presupposition. In presupposition, there is usually a piece of information which the speaker assumes the hearer already knows. This assumption is based on some shared background knowledge between the speaker and the hearer. An outsider in the circle of communication may be at a loss. He might not understand the meaning. Let us illustrate this situation. John, are you able to bring Harry along Peter? That will be splendid. On our way, we shall pick up the drinks. The presupposition in this conversation is that both John and Peter knows who Harry is. They both have an idea of the drinks and the sources from where to bring these two. What is entailment? In entailment, there is usually a pair of sentences and the truth of one derived from the truth of the other. Consider the following sentences. Tracy is minister. Tracy is a female. Sentence 1 derives from the meaning of sentence 2. This means that if sentence 1 entails sentence 2, then sentence 2 is necessarily the implication of sentence 1. I have explained presupposition and entailment in my other video. Please watch that video. Then we have anomaly. Anomaly results from the combination of two semantic features that are not compatible in describing a phenomena. Words attract specific selectional restrictions. For instance, trees are vertical while rulers, ropes and snakes are horizontal. For vertical items, we describe them in terms of tall, while for horizontal items, we describe them in terms of long. Thus, we can have tall trees and tall buildings, tall people, but long ropes, long snakes, and long rulers. It will therefore be anomalous to have a long mane or a tall snake. Contradiction. Contradiction expressions present two opposing propositions, meaning at the same time. Thus, a person cannot be dead and alive at the same time. Other examples are the circular house is rectangular. If it is circular, how is it re rectangular? The drains are flooded because there are no rains. The last sentential aspect of meaning is analyticity when we have sentences in grammatical forms and lexical meanings of their proposition which make them necessarily true. Consider the following example. Churches are usually attended by Christians. It is analytically true. These are some of the aspects of sentential semantics. Thank you for watching this lecture.